Hello everyone on the internet and thanks for tuning in. I'm Ryu Kiva of Ryu Kiva Toku. And welcome to another episode of Toku Bros. I am your co-host, The Winter Cosplayer, and this is Rider Talks. Hazelnut Togrito! Okay, so with that failed attempt... That was we'll perfect. That, that was pitch perfect. No. That was pitch in So accurate. In, in in your reality, probably. Maybe right. We'll, let that, we'll Talking. That but today, but today, everyone. Today is Rider Talk. Talk. We have got a bumper yeah. Rider Talk. And talking of show accurate, let's talk about the big event that happened digitally over the last week. And that was Tamashii Nations 2020. Right. Where's my hand? Right. Just... Just before that, just before that, let me just uh, quickly break down for the viewers as to how today's going to work because we've got such a packed show today. Uh, we've got uh, three topics going on. We're going to start off with, as uh, Ryuki has mentioned, uh, we're going to go quickly go through uh, the highlights of Tamashii Nation 2020. Then we're going to be going through the uh, two part special of uh, Greed on vs. Is Bravo. And then lastly, we're going to be finishing off with uh, Kamen Rider Saber episode nine. But then just to kickstart the top. Yeah, so, yeah, to show accurate, let's talk about Tamashii Nation's 20. So they did this as a digital event. Normally it's like in the showroom in Akihabara, which, which it actually looked like it was, to be fair. But obviously with the big COVID going on, the big COVID, uh, they did this event digitally this year so everyone could see what to expect. I mean, we got like a mixture of figures that were released, you know, even as far back as two years ago, showing themselves up at this event. Uh, we've, yes. we've got yeah we've got to see figures that are also available for pre-order or coming up for pre-order but then there was a few you know like as per any Tamashi Nations event there was like a few prototypes like being pushed out there for the first time which I'll try and distinguish between them but again so many fig I mean it's such an extensive list that we have to cover and so let's start off with the regular SH figure arts starting with our current series, Kamen Rider Saber. So, figures that have already been announced for pre-order and scheduled release were Kamen Rider's Saber and Blaze in March and April, right. respectively. Can I, of course, I can will I be reviewing you? those. Right, oh. can I correct slightly? Is it spelled Blaze or Blades? Oh. With a D. <laughs> this oh no don't we have not had this conversation yet we have not had this conversation yet not, right i'm just gonna right we can save it this if you want in uh, i the, think we should say because i was literally just going through the figure arts list but yeah blades slash blaze um i think no i think i will answer you quickly i'm sh i think they did release an official image with blaze <laughs> then again i could be wrong Right. So, it doesn't make sense. So either way, I'll, I'll either way, that. either way, those figures have been are available for pre-order for a March and April release, respectively. And Espada and Calibre have been doing the rounds for a while, and again they were shown at this event. I don't believe that pre-orders and dates have been released for those two. Coming on. To have you have you seen any of these images? If so, yeah, I've seen. Oh, I've seen. Think? Yeah, I've seen them. If what? you guys have seen them, what he's trying to get at is feel free to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, right? <laughs> Who are you looking forward to the most, though? Me? I mean, out of those... I mean, to be fair, I have already pre-ordered Sabre and Blaze. And, you know, like, Sabre I'm definitely looking forward to because obviously he's our main rider. I mean, Espada and Calibre I'm not too hot on. But the one I would be hot on if they did do a figure arts for is Kenzan. That's the one I would like to see. A figure really? Arts for. Yeah, because I, I like think the ninja thing. thing. But then again, I Espada, then again, Espada's got the Aladdin vibe going on, so I might potentially get that. But I think you would have gone announced for those two yet, as far as I'm aware. Okay. All right. So going on to Kamen Rider Zero One. This was quite an extensive list. So firstly, starting off with Izu, our secretary that we all love. I have already pre-ordered her. She's already, you know, she's already, she's already going to be released in February. 
And then the ones that they started announcing for Zero, the ones that they showed for Zero One, uh, I'm kind of like, did they announce these? I'm sure these are already released, but where I've not looked into them, I'm a bit mixed on these. So Rising Hopper, Metal Cluster Hopper, I'm pretty sure are already out there. Realizing Hopper was banded about maybe just after the finale aired. And, yo, know, I remember seeing in a couple of groups people like, look, they're doing a Realizing Hopper. And I'm like, really? So, yeah, you know, like, they've literally just added, like, a blue shine to it, as well as, like, a little titchy, tiny blue prog rise key. Uh, I believe Shining Assault Hopper and Ichigata have also been doing the rounds. I think they might have already been released. But the big one, the big two, rather, in my opinion, were Azu and Arc Zero, which were shown side by side. Now, if they do release Arc Zero, I will definitely get it. Azu, I probably wouldn't, but it's quite interesting that they put her out there at this event. Would they do a two-pack with Arc Zero and I Azu? don't think they do two-packs for Kamen Rider figure arts. I mean, even with... I mean, because like with Sentai, they did both in black and blue together. With uh, Metal Heroes, they did G-Stag and Red all together. But doing a two-pack would I mean it'd be quite funny if they did, but I very much doubt they would, plus they wouldn't make as much money doing so. Yes, but in my opinion, is it on its own? I can understand, right? But then you have Azu, which... I, know, it just I, I, looked, that... at, I looked at Azu and I'm, I wasn't very impressed, if I'm honest. So, I'm going I'm to swiftly move on. So, the... Can I, can I just... Go on. If you quick. had to pick one, if you had to add one, fi sorry, out of the uh, zero one figures, one figure, what would you be most interested in? Because for me, straight. I mean, bear in mind, I've already, bear in mind, I've already pre-ordered Izu. It would be Arc Zero, and that. But no, the, for me, the final me, three, the final the three, part. just for this little collection, is Ikazuchi, Naki, and Eden. Now, Eden was pretty much no. literally right after the finale. They showed the figure arts for Eden. But Ikazuchi and Naki, they were rumoured for so long, and I don't recall seeing them prior, but they were shown at this event last week. So out of this whole collection, it would be Arc Zero and Ikazuchi for me. I mean, Ikazuchi, I am obligated as a Mauritian. This Ikazuchi is based around the Dodo, so I am obligated to buy this one. But so for me, the whole collection, for me, it'd be Arc Zero and Ikazuchi, because Arc Zero does look amazing. Metal Cluster for me. Mm, nah. <laughs> anyway. uh, no. But Eden, I mean, the thing is, like, Eden's got that purple flair to him, which a lot of people are calling about Crocodile in Rogue, which I already have the figure arts of. But, but we'll get Eden, to which was Tamashi Studios. Yeah. Okay, but actually going on to Kamen Rider build. So, Greece Perfect Kingdom was shown at this event, which is easily available uh, right now. Rider, Kamen Rider R Prime Rogue, um, I have not seen, I can't say I've seen, but then Genius Form builds Final Form. I have seen this so many places, like I remember a while ago, they had like a few Rider Final Forms and Genius was amongst them. So I've seen this one for a while, they showed it at this event, so, you know, they released the one for x already, the Dreadlocks guy. So, Genius needs to just get out there ASAP. Cross Z Magma was also shown as well. Uh, I'm thinking I did see like a figure art form of this a couple of years ago, but you know, so many are going on. So, out of the build lineup, it's definitely going to be all about Genius because he was shown alongside Ghost I, and I can't. his final form. Right, for me, I like um, the, oh, what was I going to say? I like the uh, magma form. I'm just yeah, magma form. Good form. No, I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, if the uh, Greece was the Blizzard one, which I don't think it is. Perfect Kingdom, I think this was in the, you know, the V Cinema release. It was like yellow, primarily yellow with blue and red. Like it was a mixture of his three fallen comrades. Interesting, but that's I'm if I remember correctly, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that's already out there. I'm, I'm already right. sure that that's already released. But I'm, I'm just looking at. Well, no, I was going to say. I'm just while you're looking, at I'm going to go. 
I'm going to go on to Come Rider Gaim, which is all about that Gaim Gaiden special that we've had released over the last few weeks, which is Gridron versus Bravo. And all the ones that they showed were connected to the show. So we had Zangets Kachidoki Arms, which I'm certain I don't remember seeing in the series. So um, maybe they did it in Gaiden. Because I know Zangets had his own Gaiden as well. But I don't remember, I don't recall seeing him before. But obviously I've got the vibes from the regular Kachidoki Arms. We have mm. Gridron Lychee Arms, which is an upgrade of the regular Gridron. I will talk about that when we talk about Gaiden Gaiden. And mm. then there was Bravo King Durian Arms, which is basically a massive recolouring. I think they butched him up a bit. I'll be honest, mm. I'm not a fan of it. And yeah, I'm, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Well, that's it. I'm mentioning it now, so I don't have to get to it later, but that's just me in a woman. Mm. So, well, I'll get to that one. So, Carmen Rider O's, I'll let you read the list. So, in short, I will say that Tatabar was released, I think, late last year or earlier this year. And with the t so like one thing we knew about Tatoba is that you could take this guy apart, even though that was specifically a Shinkochi Seiho release. But then mm. now release they are now doing Shinkochi Seiho releases of the others, and yeah, and again they're all you're able to take them all apart and then do whatever combination you will of them. Do you want to read that list? So if we're going like a totem pole style, then fair enough, because you have the base form, like you mentioned, which is Tataba. Then you have the uh, yellow form, uh, which is La Torata. Then you got the green form, which is uh, Katakiriba. Then you got his, if you will, not super form, uh, the red form being uh, Tajadol. Um, then you got his blue form, which is uh, Shalta. Uh, you got his uh, grey form, which, by the way, I like, which is Sagozo. Uh, then you have the Tamashi form. Um, then you have uh, Ank, which is his uh, sidekick. And you have the uh, Tori Dem... De, 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 I can't even pronounce that. Uh, Tori uh, Dem... So, to be fair to you, you've obviously pronounced all of those great, apart from that last one, but I would have got, I would have probably got to La Torata and then started tripping up over my tongue. But yeah, I mean, because obviously, you know, to just reignite that massive argument, the final form is Puto Tira, but that was not shown at this event. Uh, but Tajador, which is actually a form I like, Tajador, anyway, but that form was shown at this event. But obviously I've skipped a little bit ahead because those are, the, so we're now talking about Shinkochi Seiho, those are the O's figures that they showed. But just to backstep a little bit, the big one that they only showed, la they only released online last month is Kamen Rider Black. Now, anyone who knows me, anyone who might have seen my Tokusatsu chart rundown, I don't know if Tamashi Nations were watching my show or what, but Carmen Rider Black is my favourite Carmen Rider. And, like, you know, I've had the regular SH Figure Arts version 2 for, like, maybe several months, only several months. And then last, like, like the month just gone, they have announced in Kochi Seiho for Carmen Rider Black. And obviously Muggins here has pre-ordered it for its April release. And I will be reviewing this as soon as season four, as soon as series four of my Tokyo Unboxing ends. I'm absolutely really hyped to get this one because it's literally the third version of Kamen Rider Black in a Tamashii Nations figure that they're doing. And you, anyone who's seen the promo images We'll see all three Kamen Rider Blacks lined up in comparisons. The one thing that, you know, image-wise that seems to stand out for Kamen Rider Black is that his brown areas seem to have veins in them because he's a cyborg. So, interesting. The other ones they showed in that kind of retro area were Kamen Rider Kiba, which I've had for about two years. It's a great figure. It's one of my favourite Shinkochi Seihos. Uh, then you've got Emperor Form and Dark Kiba, which I do believe have been around for a while or i think one of them is new but the one they are releasing this month is shinkochi seiho carmen rider ixa now the reason this one's got some hype to it is they've actually got you know the human head for wataru kurenai no that was the name of the main rider otoya kurenai being the father they have they've sculpted his own head and 
obviously I am going to mix this up with Carmen Rider Grease. It is going to be, you know, just by the images alone, it is going to be an amazing figure. Any thoughts so far? Um, what I was going to say was, in your opinion, in, in a condensed uh, um, opinion or description, for those that don't know, because we have um, various uh, rider figures lines, you've got your main rider kicks figures line series lines uh you oh, then got sh figure you then got sh you got sic and then now you also mention um shinchoku seho mm -hmm. and then you've also got the tamashi nation series in condensed for or to simplify it how would you explain to people that doesn't know what's what because from my understanding i only knew two or three that being the rider kicks figures series right and you've got the or the rkf series the rider kicks figures you got the sh figure arts which is a slight premium version if you will um right. go on, go on. and then you got the and then you got the sic figures which is the in, in my opinion i just call it seriously exaggerated uh series right but oh, other, all right you're asking the, me to explain it yeah so we've got so what you've got to bear in mind is that Carbon Rider Shock 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 Alert is a kids show, right? So you've got the kids line. So Carmen so Carmen Rider kicks figures, the ones you put together, as well as like the cheaper ones that you can get in any shop in Akihabara. Uh, yes. these you know, these are like around the thousand you know, like I talk about prices on my channel all the time. So you've got you got your around the thousand yen mark figures, which are like the, you know, they're called the vinyl figures. They're vinyl figures that you can like easily manipulate. Those are around the 500 to thousand yen mark. You've then got the 1000 to 2000 yen mark, which are normally like your rider kicks figures. Like you, you know, there's some form of DIY involved typically, or, you know, you know, there's the ones that you put together yourself, which are Sodo. And then you got rider kick figures, which typically, like, I've only ever owned one. Uh, they look like they've been put together. They're cheap plastic. They're not very show accurate. But again, they're cheap and they're quite, you know, they are quite fun to play with. Like, I'll play with one of them on my channel. You know, the one. The, the, the main road. The, they're the main line. They're but, the yeah, main line. Those are the ones that you see, prom you know, those are the ones you see the kids' commercials for. Yes. And, you know, like during Rider and Sentai, you don't really see, you know, you only see for those. But ironically, during the Ultraman commercials, they will promote the more premium figures. So anything above two, anything above 2000 yen will typically be in the sort of show accurate 14. You know, so it's also an age thing as well. So like anything that's under 2000 yen will typically be for ages four and up. Whereas anything, oh, yeah, and again, this is just a general rule of thumb. I'm not 100% accurate on this. But typically, anything over 2,000 yen will be for ages 14 plus. So this is where you start off with the, ma the most basic line, SH Figure Arts. Simple style, heroic action figures. And yes, this is done by Tamashi Nations. You do have the Bandai and Toei seal of approval. To know that they are official figures, you know, they are officially licensed products. So, SH Figarts is normally the basic standard that we get. And, you know, and again, they can range from anything between 2,000 to 6,000 yen on these. Uh, or, you know, maybe 2 to 5,000 yen is probably a little bit more realistic. And, you know, you'll get like your basic, you'll get your basic figure, you'll get like a chain. So, the difference between these and the children's products is they will typically change the hands so you won't have like hands that clasp like this you'll literally have hands in a specific position that you then pop off and then pop on the hands you want just so it's completely so it's a little bit more accurate than the children's toy and so with these you know like again you'll get like different colorizations you'll get different forms and also they are they are one they are limited releases and two, they are decisive releases, so they will typically only release a particular specific form if they feel it will sell. And that's S8 Figure Arts. The, there you've then got two spin-offs, well, I say spin-offs, you get two offshoots of the basic Figure Arts release, 
you'll then get the right i've got to get this right so you then get the web exclusives but then you get the premium exclusives as well so these will typically chart around five thousand to seven thousand yen and so these will be ones that have a little bit more of a premium feel to them they'll feel a little thicker they'll feel a little bit more you know like they've got a little bit more gusto but again that high detailing will be there on top of that uh yeah and again this will be you know and again just a general rule of thumb the web exclusive and the premium exclusive again they're generally in that same ballpark but then going one above that is what we call shinkochu seiho so that is what you've literally heard me just talk about in regards to black all those different o's combinations which is quite crazy now these are typically you know not only are they a little bit more refined but they call it a true bone carving so they make it as accurate to the human body as possible in terms of flexibility in terms of joints in terms of sculpting not just like the armor but the actual skeleton of the person in question as well obviously with the Kamen Rider O's line that they've done for Shinkochi Seiho they've kind of gone a little bit one further by making it pop off yeah like having all these parts pop off and stuff so it's not just the hands it's also like below the chest and above the chest so shoulders up and belly down so like a person pole you mean again because like even for regular sh for guards they never did this for common rider o's and then when it came to that cheap line you just had like the the combinations that they wanted you to focus on whereas what they're doing now with shinkachi seiho and common rider o's they're making it pop off and on now they've tried this as well with Carmen Rider Deno, which I don't believe I've listed yet. So with Carmen Rider Deno, they did they released earlier this year the sword form gun form mix where you can basically flip different parts and pop on different armor so you've got one of the two forms. Now Axel and Rod form have been rumored for quite a while. This wasn't shown at this event. Now at this event, so yeah, just to talk about Smashy Nations 2020 again. They did show Deno platform, they showed the gun form and sword form, but then they also showed Xeranos' Alta ear form, which was completely unknown up until this point. But Momotaros, imagine, that's been around for a while. And then just to quickly gloss over it, they also showed De De Decade Complete form and Cougar Rising form. So again, like when it comes to Shinkochi Seiho, it's all about just that little bit more premium. It comes in a typically smaller box, but it's also, it's not just like a packet. It's literally a box that you lift the top off and you see everything in front of you. It does look lush. If you don't know what I'm talking about, feel free to check out my channel, Ryuki Vitoku, and my Toku unboxing series goes over all of this. The one, the two things that my series doesn't go over, which I will briefly cover before we start talking about the actual show, is the SIC. Now, SIC... I've forgotten what it stands for. I did know what it stood for. And if someone... Can I? No, 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 don't tell me just yet. But basically, it's a, man it's a manga. I'm using the American pronunciation for that. So SIC is the manga. Now I'm using the British pronunciation. SIC is the Kamen Rider manga. And, you know, like, they do all these old storylines. But then SIC, specifically, is reimagining each Kamen Rider in a very sort of caricature, exaggerated form. So, you know, like, you know, so for example, Carmen Rider Kiva's SIC, he looks ridiculously gothic, his helmet, his emblems massively expanded on his helmet, he's much more butch, you know, he's got more chains on him, he's got bats around him and stuff like that. So, SIC at Tamashii Nations 2020, and I'm pretty sure that SIC is not the name of the manga now that you're grinning, but I'm thinking it's got some connection to the manga, and also SIC does release its own manga as well. But specifically to Machine Nations 2020, they have released Kamen Rider Forze base states, Kamen Rider Forze rocket states, and one that's actually been shot. So those two I've not seen before, but one I'm pretty sure I have seen before is the SIC for Kamen Rider Fires, where it's literally just lights everywhere. Any thoughts before I talk about the the new Tamashii Nation product project, project? Right, so just to fill in the gap of what SIC itself stands for. Mm -hmm. So you've got, uh, SIC stands for, according to Google, is a super imaginative Chogokin. Yes, yes. 
Now, I have uh, had a quick peruse over uh, the fours and um, uh, fours are rocket state and base states. Uh, base state, rocket state, and they look hilarious. While they do not <laughs> look as exaggerated, shall we say, that I to have me thought. it's like <laughs> he has a tiny no. head and a massive body. That's just but nevertheless, though. Right. But now Fize is an interesting one. I looked at the image before you told me it's going to have lights in it. If it has lights in it. No, like no. In I mean, time. when I mean the lights, I mean like, a, I mean, because I think I have seen a version of the SIC where it does light up. But what I meant is like, you know, kind of the Tron style, you know, like the lines on the suit. Yeah. Do I mean, control, again, but I don't SIC... it does light up on the figure. SIC tends to come on come with a lot of effects. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so like, while these images that uh, you and I have seen of both ba uh, Forza base form, Rocket State, um, they look all right. You know, they look a little bit more lightly exaggerated. I'm sure with all the effects, uh, what's it um, attached to them, would make it more bombastic. And same with Fies. I'm sure it'll make it look even more bombastic. And so they are, if you will, teasing us. So granted. But on its own, I have seen better from what I've seen, but I'm curious as to see what it would look like. I mean, I saw that I only saw them in person in Japan and they look mental. That's all I can say. But just to wrap up the figure part, yo, know, just to wrap up to Machinations 2020 in this talk. I am going to talk about the big one, Kamen Rider Double. Now, Tamashi Nations, uh, the studio behind all these figures, they are embarking on a new project. They are embarking on, if I get this correct, Tamashi Nations Studio Premium. Now, what these are, these aren't, as far as I can tell, these aren't actual figures. These are basically statues. And they announced two at Tamashi Nations 2020. The first one being Ultraman Zero, which I will talk about in Ultra Talk next time. But then they also showed Kamen Rider Double. Now, they were very vague on the Kamen Rider Double details. They just showed what it looked like. He's basically Kamen Rider Double in Cyclone Joker form fighting two Dopants. But what we know, and again, I'll talk about it a little bit more in detail uh, for Ultra Talk. But Ultraman Zero, uh, he is, again... It is extremely high detail. It is supposed to be a much bigger release, like in terms of the size of the damn thing. But it is going to retail at 132,000 yen, which is an absolutely ridiculous expensive price. Now, we don't have a Professor Kamen Rider double, but again, looking at the Ultraman Zero price of 132,000 yen, which is a lot of money, that is well over a thousand dollars it is just under a thousand pounds and yet you know we will it, we will just have to wait and see if one that they are going to intend to release common rider doubles studio premium release and then it's price which is going to be a joke your thoughts on that? Can I, uh, your thoughts on that because i will move on right right because number one, uh, I'm just looking at the link that you sent me earlier, and um, along with the Ultraman Zero, there is also a still image of um, uh, Ultraman Belial as well. Along oh with yeah, that. yeah, yeah. But, I've seen but, that as well. But I don't um, think I, was I think Belial is link... actually a premium studio release as well. But I don't think they released the price for it either. Nevertheless, I would leave that with you uh, for Ultra Talk, but in regards to just um, Kamen Rider uh, Double itself, honestly, it looks all right, but... But it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do exactly. anything. Exactly. It's a statuette at the end of the day, and I'm in no shape or form willing to pay four figures, if that, for a statuette that he's just facing a bunch of minions. Well, I mean, it just depends how much of a fan of Kamen Rider Double you are, right? I mean, I love the Double. I love the forms, don't get me wrong. And I love the base form, don't get me wrong. But 
Right. Yeah. Let's move on to Kamen Rider Gridron versus Bravo. So right. is, I'll, I will sum up what I think in 60 seconds or less. So Gridron versus Bravo. This was a two-parter that totaled 25 minutes combined. I am not sure why they did this aside from maybe as a toy commercial. But I like sure. it. You basically had Bravo's cake shop guy, apprentice guy. He's now like this hotshot celebrity chef yeah. who's kind of lost his morals. I mean, you see him, right? He's like, he's all in the yellow Mazda or whatever it is he's driving with mm -hmm. the driving it and that. And then like you got, you got Melon Arms guy, Zangetz, basically going up to Bravo saying, oh, there's like someone's using hell fruits or something. So for some reason, Bravo's the one with the task because the apprentice guy is the guy who suspects to have these hell fruits. So he goes after him, but yeah, they have like a fight and stuff. He gets possessed. King Jurian Arms, hence the new figure arts. But then it turns out that Zangetz is like, oh, actually, it's you. It's you, assistant bird, who just happens to be the girl from Kamen Rider Girls. And she becomes something or other. Uh, I don't know. Was she? Did she have a fruit? I'll explain that once. I can't even remember if she had a fruit. But then the apprentice guy sees his mentor Bravo like being possessed and shit. And then the dead guy from Gaim, who I vaguely remember, gives him, like, yeah, because he opens up uh, Helheim fruit, sees a lychee, which is a Mauritian thing, but it's also a Japanese thing. And then, um, you know, he couldn't make it a lock seed, but then the dead ghost guy appears, makes it a lock seed. He then becomes lychee arms, which, again, I saw so many screenshots of this for weeks, I thought it looked a bit rubbish, but I see it on screen, on this very screen, fighting. I actually do love this guy. I actually love the look. I love the way he fights. He also has a very interesting Hisatsu attack, if you noticed. Uh, and so from that, like, you know, I get like a very toy commercial vibe from it. I mean, you know, because they released Gaim Gaiden 1 and 2, and this was supposed to be like Gaim Gaiden 3 or 4 or something. It was in no way comparable because those one, because Game Guide one and two were pretty good, but this, this was nowhere near that guy. Yeah, you know, there was nowhere near that quality. And obviously, they did like a saber appearance in episode eight, but we talked about that last time, if you remember. And yet, you know, I mean, as much as I, yeah. You know, so again, it does its premise of being a toy commercial. So I, I'm, so I probably will buy Lychee Arms now in figure arts. So it's done its purpose, but I'm just like, story-wise, like, why? Why now? See, for me, I... Going on the premise that, bearing in mind, Gaim was not one of my favourite series, I will, I will reiterate that. So I'm going at this just on the premise of watching this uh, two-part back-to-back on its own merit. I liked it. The story was simple, you had minimal character, which in a sense you kind of recognize, but you don't really need to know. Um, you get to see the one positive thing I love about Guy is the suits. The suits looked amazing. You get to see Zangetsu Melon Katsudoki arms, which looks amazing. I'm not going to deny that. You then uh, see... Um, Dorian again, uh, but then you then see the King Dorian arms, um, which I love it. I love how that looks. You then see. see I, didn't, um, I didn't, but you know, I already said that, but go on. No, well, I mean, it adds that from this very. Uh, how can I word it? From something that, from someone that looks very uh, strong and uh, almost like an executioner type. Um, uh, you then add a very punk emo-esque by giving it a Mohican. And, I will uh, agree with you on the a... punk look. I will agree with you on that punk look. Right, go on. And, it, and you give it a bit of a cape, you give it a bit more uh, buffness, and it just looked... I think it was clever in regards to wardrobe colour. It wasn't just a simple, uh, what's it, colour change. It was... They added a little bit more character, but that's just my opinion. I will with no, I'll agree with you. I'll agree with you, yeah. With the lychee arms, it, now that I think about it, it gave me a bit of um, 
uh, 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 Common Rider Brave level uh, nine, uh, 100 form. Are you mixed from Gaim and XA? Because they didn't do it in levels. No, 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 no. What I mean is, is Lychee Arms reminded me appearance wise of Bravo? Brave level 100. Oh, Brave. I thought you said, I'm sure you said Bravo, but yeah, all right, Brave. Um, I can see it. I can see it. And that's all I'll say, honestly. But, um,. I mean, besides that, the oh, in regards to the uh, Helheim arms, basically the Helheim. Was that what? Fruit, is that what she was the, called, Helheim arms? Because I don't remember seeing that. The fruit was literally she used a Helheim fruit. Yeah, yeah, they're there all Helheim fruits, but no, no, it's no, supposed no, to be like an no. evil fruit or something. No, there was no assigned. It was just literally Helheim. Helheim. All right, that yeah. makes a bit more and sense, then, I guess. And then what's more, it was basically a recolor slash retinker of the uh, peach arms. Was it? I th I saw more Kiva La from Kiva. No, it was from Decade, really. But anyway. I, I did not think, I think that. I don't know, but to be fair, they didn't even release it. They didn't even show a figure out for it, and I don't think anyone cared. That's just my opinion. Well, either or. Yeah, I, I mean, was just really excited that... that a Kamen Rider girl became an evil Kamen Rider. I mean... At the end of the day, as we normally do, would I recommend it to a newbie? Sure. Just for the sheer, you know, 20 minute, just for kicks, sure. Yeah, 25 uh, minute toy commercial. Why not? I agree with you, sort of. Cause it... but... That is the key thing I completely did not think about until you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, saw, I just saw a toy this commercial. Is, this is such a toy commercial in spades. Pretty much. So, Anywho. let's move on to our boy of the hour, Kamen Rider Saber. So, I... Kamen Rider Saber, episode 9. I am kicking this off by saying I enjoyed this episode. It had a good balance of story and plot progression with a few good plot twists. I'll say that the choreography, though, you know, kicking off with this. Uh, we see in the, in the intro, like, Kenzan criticises Tomo's swordsmanship, even though he's not really a swordsman plus that he is a novelist by trade. But yet, we do get to see him kick butt in civilian form, so I think that puts Kenzan's words into his mouth. I mean, briefly, yeah. about the Monster of the Week, I'm not sure how I felt that it had a duck motif, but it definitely looked good, in my opinion. I'm not sure why they made it to fire like some of the previous, but they did use many Wonder Eye books in his creation, so you notice that, right? Duck, or...? It was a duck, because it was going foie foie. It, right, see, here's the thing. I got more of a, um Egyptian kind of... Um, sort of a... How, how can you call it? Sort of that kind of... Um, Egyptian. I, I mean, he looked good. Egyptian kind he of looked good. No, but, no, it was a duck. It was a duck. Don't be confused on that, because foie foie is the onomatopoeia for duck. Right? Also, fluffwa also means fluffy in Japanese. It does, it does. You're correct on that one. Anyway, but I'll say there was at least, yeah, aside from the scene where they fought out a suit, I felt that there was a lot more live action choreography and less CGI than we've been seeing. So I do reckon that must mean that Japan has its COVID under much better control. Am I right on that? How did you feel about the choreography on this? So. Right, I'm going to start with choreography. Meh, nothing special, no disrespect. Say but... no, I liked it, but all right, go on. Um, I, the story for me was interesting. I'm not going to deny that. I actually like um, the, the again, uh, slow character development, but at least there was a bit more. Um, I... Honestly, I love how... Um, now, I'm going to start with a positive and then tilt it to a negative. I love how they introduced Kamen Rider Slash. I Okay, I will love... be getting to my, I'll be getting to my analysis of that in a bit. But yeah, go on, you can right. do yours now. Right. I love how they gave him different personalities through different Wonder Ride books, starting off with... Um, uh, and and thus, I mean, 
I know we're jumping the gun slightly, but using the uh, Hansel and Gretel book, um, and then followed by a book that I can't. I don't Bremen know. Bremen or rock bands. Okay, some kind of a rock book of some sort, but yeah. either way, um, it. I I think it adds character in all aspects. It gives the actor more range to play with, if you will. Or I, it shows I will you... disagree. I will disagree with that, and I'll tell you why later. But go on. Right. But in short, um, if this is a build up to sort of like a Snow White Seven Dwarfs kind of book, giving him more characters and so on and so on, just just just, just bear with me. But if he has more characters, potentially, then I don't know whether they're going down that route, but it's kind of what I'm thinking anyway. The one main thing I did not like is how they introduced um, Saber's super form in this episode. Right. At we the will, same right. Time. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this right at the end. We'll talk about it right at the end. But yeah, the Wonder Eyed combos we'll talk about right at the end. But when it comes to the Wonder Ride books, we do see several plot progressions in this episode. Firstly, starting with the villains who are trying to make a Wonder Ride book to be more powerful than King No Arthur. It does become interesting, and then you've got the two commanders feeling that they were left out of the loop. I mean, I believe that there were scans relating to Calibur having a power-up, but a lot remains to be disclosed. That does include the speculated real identity of Calibur, which has been doing the rounds for some weeks. The next ride book is obviously the new ride book of the episode, Hansel Nuts Tor Gretel, which after Slash analyses the power and is able to repair his sword and power-up, which is obviously an amazing cool henshin scene he does, right? And the fight scene's very like, very slick and cool, and it ha doesn't help being that cliche of the new edition looking ridiculously cool to their debut episode appearance. But for me at least, the Bremen No Rock Band, that, you know, this is coming to your point, the Bremen No Rock Band for some reason alters his personality, which actually adds some flair to it. But then... You know, I personally doubt that we'll see this personality out of armor, so I doubt we'll get to see that acting range that you were talking about. But you know, saying yo, know, but do, saying something like that does line me up to be proven wrong. So you never know; we might have you know, like sort of Kamen Rider Deno style acting, where you know that you know the actor for Kamen Rider Deno was so good, and then he went on to be Kenshi no Koshi or whatever that anime was called. <laughs> manga. Uh, but then I'll even say the theme of sweets and music seems to be a little bit out of kilter for me, especially as he is supposed to be a verse swordsman of the group, so you'd expect his power-up to be like a lot more ancient than having a sound system in there. But that's just mm. you know, a vague opinion of mine. Uh, but I will just quickly switch on to the Wonder Ride books that you mentioned as well. So, so if you remember uh cosplayer that our last episode when we were talking about episodes four to eight we were talking about carmen rider o's we were talking about that medal system we were saying about how um you know how, i mean i was i'm pretty sure i was a skeptical one i'm like yeah they're never going to do that with carmen rider say but be too ambitious even though you clearly know yeah you know, like we know we yeah, we noted that there were like some books that were the same color but then, yes, literally, as soon as we put out episode eight, two, you know, two weeks ago, they announced that, yeah, the colours are going to be sets. They're going to be known as Wonder Ride combos. I'm still going to say that the one for Kamen Rider Sabre, I'm pretty sure that third book's brown. Right. But, so... but still, they are, do they are doing this Kamen Rider O's route that I'm pretty sure I swore they weren't going to do. Where you've now got these set books of the same color, and they've you know they've right. gone through. They've they've already announced red, yeah, you know, blue and yellows. And again, this is starting to sound more Sentai than anything. But I can't remember what was supposed to be in Blade's Blues trio. Bearing in mind, right. King No Arthur is a blue book, by the way. So I'm not sure if that was part of his trio. No, it's not. So. Just to just to quickly premise, uh, so starting with uh, Blades, uh, you've got Lion Senki, you've then got Peter Fantasista, and then you've got the Flying Pegasus. Yeah. Okay. Right. Then I so think, then I think Saber was Storm Eagle, Brave Dragon, and the one that he got specifically in Episode Nine, which is a brown one, and I think it was like manga based or something. It, no. 
No, it's based on Journey to the um, Journey so to, to the East. Earth. All oh, right, Journey to no. the East. Okay. Do you know what Yellow's was? Uh, so he's got he's got uh, Lampdale hedgehog, and Gina. But... Yeah, Lampdale and Gina, Hedgehog. Do you know what his third one was? No, no. I I already I've already ri right. So I'm gonna go on to this. So the vaguely seen ride book that we see in episode nine. Uh, I think was called something like Tricerebrus or something, which is seen in the, I, the new girl, which is seen in the hands of the new girl, appears, right? Can I just double check something? I honestly thought the Cerberus book was the second book towards, or a power book for um, Calibre. No, I don't know. This is it. We don't know. Right. The, the actual answer is we don't know because it's only just appeared in episode nine. But you got the new girl. And if you notice, it is yellow. And if you look in the episode 10 preview, she's handing it to Kenza. She's handing it to Espada. Yes. So I reckon... But we don't... I mean, we I'm don't not, know not, what Yeah, we don't know for certain. Is. We don't know for certain. But again, we see this new girl turn up. And like, I thought that girl would be a new rider. And she very could well yet could be. But it seems in the preview that she'll hand it to Kento. So it just leaves us with this arrogant female who kind of mugged May off. Which at least May in this episode, Good. right? At least May in this episode was a lot more toned down. I mean, that was my opinion. Thank anyway. but, goodness. But the thing that we see with May at the beginning of the episode is that you know she's constantly putting pressure on Toma to come up with a new book idea, and you know, like, cause she spent most of the previous eight episodes getting Toma to release a book, but then we now see her putting more pressure. Now, if all editors are like this, then George R R Martin's editor. Needs to put pressure on him to release like the final book in it, final two books in his series. So it's neither here nor there, really. I mean, uh, I'll say like you know, just to kind of try and wrap this up. Finally, for this is finally for this episode is how both the end scene and preview for episode ten is heavily about Calibur. So I do think the resonance between Tome and Calibur makes a hint that. Uh, that Calibur is actually the previous Saber or just an original character and that Kento's father is possibly either killed or just missing in action. I am dying to find out. Your final thoughts for episode 9. Right, so I will reiterate um, what I said wholeheartedly and I, I just want to get your quick opinion. Do you think they should have saved the, the super form, if you or as I'd like to call it, Crimson Dragon form for the next episode and let this episode be for slash because in my I agree opinion, i actually do agree i didn't think about that but i do agree with you because again me you know like it's kind of overload but then it's like you know they've got a whole year to push product on us so it just depends I'm, how much they've got planned for the rest of the season i mean this is my problem with the um a as you finally acknowledge and that I can finally say to you I told you so that this is so O's copy again and I didn't think they'd do that I'll be honest I didn't think they'd do that Cause... I mean we've already got we got uh what's it um uh what's it uh fantasy um Peter Fantasy Fantas uh, Fantastic Pegasus form or whatever for yeah. um for uh, the, the blades and now we're getting uh, Crimson Dragon, and then in the next episode you're going to get all three, and then in this, so in this episode you get Slash, which then gets dwarfed at the end by Crimson Dragon form. And it's like this episode would have been better if A was a two part, or such, about Slash, and two, just if you stretch it rather than rushing it, give us something. It would give us something to watch more and more and more. No, I'll agree this with episode you. just felt like a big, and I'm going to use your term for a minute here, toy commercial or product placement. Basically. To be fair, I'm you know like I won't say I came up with that because like a lot of people have felt you know like the last few years of Tokus, you know like Toei's Tokus <laughs> have all been toy commercials like they're pushing the latest product. I mean, you look at Kamen Rider Geo and all those ride watches. It just seems like a big toy commercial. So yes. that's, you know, that whole ideology. I mean, because that is basically what the show is. The show, like the toys aren't supposed to be selling the show. The shows are supposed to be selling the toys. 
Right. While I agree, that's what it all is. But like, no, in, I think in that, when you I have agree. like no. when you sorry, just give me a sec. Like, but when you've got like a really good story for any given series, yeah, any given Sentai series, any any given Rider series, when you've got a good story, it's it kind of masks the fact that it's a toy commercial. But then if you've got something like Gaim Gaiden three, like what we've just had released, I think it was the third one. It might be the fourth. Lost count. Uh, but then, you know, but again, you look at, again, you kind of look at how Q Ranger was, where it's, mm. they're just chucking out Q Tamas, every, you know, like kind of what you're saying. So again, if they're trying to cram as many products into one episode, because if they're just constantly rolling out cheap products multiplied, rather than like how it was back in the day of Showa Rider, where it's like, oh, this is a product, you know, that costs so much. Then they're not releasing as many products, but their products cost more and they're better quality. Then of course they're not going to cram so much product into one episode. Whereas you look at again, kind of your point. So if they are doing Crimson Dragon and Slash in the same episode, how you know, like, are we going to get like a better storyline with less product further down, or is it just, or are we just here for a year? Where they're just going to be cramming one product after another, it will be insane to find out. Bearing in mind, Zia My... was constant product. Yes, I mean I agree on that. And uh, furthermore, my fear is there's going to be that, like you pointed out, the lack of consistency. Whether if it's going to be okay, let's just chuck all the product out, right? And then you know, you then if they focus on the story, great. But then there's none of that excitement for any new extra forms. That is another... Who knows? I mean, the fact that you've already got the Wonder Ride combo now, episode 9, who knows what Saber's final form is going to be? And then... Library form. I think you said that last time, and again, it's going to be neither here nor there. But I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. And also to wait and find can... out, kind of is true identity. Go on. Can I just but... add one more thing? Go no, on, one last word. thing I did not like, that they spoiled in this episode, spoiler, when Calibur takes two Wonder Ride books, right, from uh, Rintaro and uh, Kento, he takes the Peter Fantasista and he takes the Hedgehog. Okay. Fine. But, but then, in the preview to episode 10, they get them back. Well, of course. They probably, in the yeah, they probably get them back during the course of episode 10. That's just my assumption. Right. They always do. Prolong it a little. Let it marinate. Like again, no, no, no. I think See, this, is my, this is my problem. You know how we talked about episode. Which one was it? Where um, Ken, um, uh, not Kento, um, Toma went into that other world yeah. to basically get yeah, King, King Arthur. Arthur. He had no, he had no power. It was all character development, if you will. Hmm. They should have done or could have done something similar for. What's it, Rintaro and Kento? They did for Rintaro because he had that whole... But they, they did it in the same time that Toma went to that dimension. Because no, Rintaro, no, 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 Rintaro no, no, was no. in his little training thing and we didn't see what happened. He, was, he had like a flashback to his mentor who was a veteran actor. And then he just... He was just doing right somersaults. Again, we didn't see it in full, but they set it up for him having that development we just didn't see it but he definitely had it My but i guess that is all for this episode and uh, you know like we will see how episode 10 develops and we'll talk about that as it after it airs so you can catch us all on the social medias as per so thanks for watching you've got my boy winter cosplayer on facebook and instagram at the winter cosplayer you got ourselves the toppy bros uh you can find us on facebook instagram this very youtube channel and Twitter at TopiBros71. Finally, myself, Ryu Kibataku. So I've been on a little bit of a hiatus lately, but you can still catch me on Facebook, Twitter, my YouTube, my Instagram, my Patreon, and my WordPress. But rest assured, I am waiting for Carmen Rider Thousand Figure Arts to touch down. As soon as he does, Toko Unboxing Series 3 is going to be on the air. So thank you. Amen. So go and I'll let you sign it off. No, as I was going to say, if we do have any more news of source, we will by all means uh, come back to you guys. But as always, and as always, join us next time and fist through the camp. Fist through the camp.
See you next time.